good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Good morning to those who are out there watching on Facebook or YouTube. May God bless you, continue to keep you. And we look forward to the day when we can all worship together. Amen. Amen. But for those who are abroad who really can't make it, um, we thank you for your presence. It's a lot of places you could have turned to this morning, but we thank you. we're thankful that you're here with us. Amen. And we pray that you hear something that may change your station or your position in life. Oh, man, I think that's about all I really have. If I forgot anything, I charge it to my head, not my heart. Don't you like how folks say that? <laughs> it just means I, I didn't write nothing down and I can't remember anything. <laughs> Amen. But I do know the word. I do remember that. Because the most important part is the scriptures. Singing is great, but that's gravy. We need some meat and potatoes. And so... What I loved about the mountain, I've always loved about the mountain, is that when you come here, you're going to get some meat and potato. And we throw some vegetables on there, too. Amen. So, you know, you need some roughage to clean out all the meat. <laughs> you know, you have to be able to digest it. Amen. And so today, I think we're going to be a little theological today here. So you might want to get your pens and your pads ready. Um, but it's preaching time. Amen. This will be the springboard of the text. So 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, reading from the uh, King James Version. The Bible reads, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. There you may be able to bear it. The NRV says, the only temptations that you have are the same temptations that all people have. But you can trust God. He will not let you be tempted more than you can bear. But when you are tempted, God will also give you a way to escape that temptation. Then you will be able to endure it. I like to speak from the subject. We accept temptation over revelation and illumination. We accept temptation over revelation and illumination. Father God, I pray now you look me to the well and leave me there until I'm done. You understand the magnitude of this assignment way more than I do. Allow me to preach your words that the hearers may hear and become doers of your words and not mine. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We accept temptation more readily than we would revelation and illumination. And so, in order to understand this particular um, thought process, this theology, I need you to understand what temptation is. Temptation is the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. Anytime you see the word temptation, it is aligned with something that is wrong. In the garden, Adam and Eve was tempted in the wilderness, Jesus was tempted. And so temptation is that thing, thank you, that we readily do without hesitation. Amen? We get involved in a whole lot of things that we have no business getting involved in. Matthew 6, 13 says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Matthew 26 and 41 says, stay awake and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
So part of our failures, if not most of our failures, is based on what? Temptation. But now, this temptation doesn't come from God. God is not there to tempt us. Amen? And so when we look at this particular test, and I, let me just put a kind of uh, an apologetic theme to it. Uh, this is that scripture that everybody always talks about, that God will put no more on you than what you can bear. Amen? And so what we do is we, we've heard it, and we internalize it, and we deliver it, but we deliver it in the wrong way. And I am guilty of that as well. Why? Because it becomes easy to reiterate something that you think is right, even though their understanding is wrong. And everything about understanding God's word is making sure that your understanding is correct. Because one thing off will throw off the doctrine. Amen? And so we say that God will put no more on you than what you can bear, but we was using that for every conversation when the only thing that this is dealing with is sin. We was taking it to understand that every situation that would apply to, but then that cancels out Jesus. It cancels out him being our burden bearer, our heavy load sharer. It cancels all those things out. So when you lose someone in your life, a loved one, and something as traumatic is happening in you, this is something that you cannot bear. This is not what the scriptures are talking about. It is talking about sin. There is a way out. He leaves an escape path. He leaves a route. Why? Because there's something that you fail to look at, and that's the revelation and illumination, and I'll get to those. Amen? So I apologize for my misuse and misunderstanding of the text over the years, but thanks to the floatum, I recognize the error <laughs> of my ways. Just because it sounds good don't make it right. Amen? And that's why you have to dig into his word. So in other words, it, it, I was lazy at the approach because I assumed it was the way it is based upon what I heard other preachers preach through the years. That's a, ter that's a dangerous thing. That's why I always tell you that when you hear the scriptures, when you hear a word, make sure you go back and study that word to make sure you have a full understanding versus saying something that just because your pastor said it. That's a dangerous thing. That's how heresy begins. That's how all this trouble begins because people won't do the work. So we have to do the work. But back to this particular message. Think about it when you were coming up. Temptation is all around you. This world has fallen because of temptation. Amen? Something that you won't, but you can't have. And you know it to be so, but because you want it so much, you disregard revelation and illumination. You understand? So, you, you got to walk with me on this thing. Everything, every moment where you stumble, temptation has been tied to it. Um, your husband, your wife, the person you're dating, your home, your place of employment, all of these things, even though they were not good for you, you were tempted because you wanted what you wanted. And then the end result is typically that after you realize it's not what you need, then you try to download this particular individual, this particular home, this particular job, these particular things. But the thing that got you there was temptation because you are or we are more readily to accept temptation as fact right. over revelation and illumination. Right. Now, revelation and illumination will lead you to the right place, but temptation is the one that leads you away from revelation and illumination. And so you're not being duped because you don't know. You're being duped because you haven't learned enough to understand temptation over revelation and illumination. Amen? So when you're dealing with stuff, 
you deal with it from a physical level. Because spiritually, we're inept. We're not there. We should be, but we're not. And so if sin is that thing that can tempt you to go somewhere where you don't really want to go, but you go anyway because your flesh is craving for it, not only that, it's easier to fall into temptation than it is to follow revelation and illumination. Jesus proved that you could do it because, think about it, if, if, if Satan is tempting you in the wilderness and he has everything that you need, that you think you need, and he says, I have the power over it, you know, and he uses scriptures in order to paint that picture, if it was not for Jesus using scripture back in this correct text, in the correct theology, then Satan might have won. So we get tempted, but we don't have a scripture to throw back at the temptation. Let me explain something to you. I, I, me, me, me and my wife was in the, the, the process of trying to possibly make a move. And so the move, it was a home that had everything that, 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 that we needed or that we would want. Because you understand need is not the same as want, right? You know, so the needs have been met where we are. The want goes beyond the needs. But sometimes it's the temptation that leads you to the wants. And so when we are posed with the opportunity to possibly move somewhere, uh, the temptation could have easily taken over and said, look, we're able to do this. Let's get this done. There's some inconveniences along the way, but because we are able to do it, because the t it's being dangled right in front of you, a chance for something new, right? <laughs> if I allow temptation to lead me, I'm not following God. And so I pull back and I say, well, look, Lord, here's what I'm going to do. I call my wife and I say, look, we're going to have to work the Gideon theology on this one. You know, and Lord, if you want me to take just this little bit of folk, I need the fleece to be uh, dry and, and the ground around it to be wet. And then God did it. And then Gideon was like, well, you know, I, I just want to make double show. Now make the fleece wet and the ground around it dry. So I said, Lord, if this is something, because everything was pointing to this new move. Everything was popping up out of nowhere, and it was showing that this may be what the mark or the, the, the move is. And so when I pulled back from temptation, I said, look, Lord, I, let's give it this seven days, seven the number of perfection, seven, Lord. So if it's meant to be, then after seven days, this place will still be here. Well, when the seven days came, and I talked to the person, some things had changed. Okay, so now I said, wait a minute. <laughs> what's the deal breaker versus what's not the deal breaker, right? So situation has changed, and I said, if it's not meant to be, then this lot should not be available or something should happen. Well, the lot was not available. The lot next to it was. Then one of the things I wanted was not able to go on that lot. And so here's where temptation begins to work on you because then you try to figure out I, how to convince myself, right? How to convince myself that this is still the move that God wants me to do. But yet when I prayed, I prayed, Lord, that you would change the situation. So if it's not, that I would listen to that. But when I got the answer, I was still not ready to listen. Temptation. It will kill us. It will destroy us. It will put us out there where we don't need to be because we don't have the protection of the Lord anymore. The reason why Abraham went to a new a, a land unknown, it wasn't temptation. It was through revelation. God revealed something to him. He says that if you go, I'll make you the father of many nations. See, when God gets in something, he gives you a reason to go, a reason to hold on. Temptation doesn't give you anything but a momentary high or some pleasure in what you are doing until it comes home to roost. But why do we follow temptation more than the other aspect of it? So look, let me, let me, let me look at Revelation real quick. Revelation, it is a surprising and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way. If you look at it in the biblical perspective, it is the divine or supernatural disclosure to humans of something relating to human uh, existence or the world. So revelation is simply 
a revealing of something that is divine. When you're dealing spiritually, when you're dealing the physical, it's still something that you didn't know about. It's being revealed. But here's the kicker when it comes down to this revelation thing is that the revelation when it, released, when it relates to God's word is there is no new revelation. Everything that God wanted to do has already been stated, has already been done. So it is not new. But temptation wants you to hold on to revelation as if it's something new that you just got, but it's not. It just means that what was once hidden from you is now revealed, but it's not nothing new. It just means that through your walk with God, you have now entered that thing called illumination. See, illumination adds light to the revelation. The Bible is God's revelation to us. So there's nothing new about the scenario I just spoke about, about seeking God first before I make a move that may be detrimental to my life. Temptation will have you make a move without consulting the Holy Spirit because you think you're bigger and you're bad enough and you think I understand God. I don't care how long you live on this earth, you will never understand God completely. Not even an inkling of an understanding because he would do things that we would never do. Yeah. Romans 6, 16, 25 says, Now to him who was able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden from the long ages past, but now revealed and made known through prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all Gentiles might come to faith and obedience. In the midst of this that I just read, revelation is there. The mystery has been revealed. Illumination now, because we have this word, we know that the illumination was Christ's death on the cross. Salvation for all of humanity, for all of mankind. So therefore now you are no longer condemned to where you were when you accept Jesus. It is no longer a secret. And because you just found out, it's not a new revelation. It's illumination on what has already been revealed. So when we begin to use this theology, when we begin to use this, 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 this pattern, this method, we will find ourselves falling out of less trouble. Temptation, this world tempts us every day. Even when it comes to the church, temptation runs rapid around this place. Huh? Tempted to talk about someone. Tempted to look down on someone. Tempted to feel like you're better than someone else. Tempted to be if your education is higher or yours is lower. It's temptation that runs around here that keeps the church from being what a church is supposed to be. As a matter of fact, the reason why the churches are out here so uh, uh, fractured right now is through temptation. Everybody feels like they're doing it the right way. They feel like they're doing it their, their way. But how does it line up with God's scriptures? You're not doing nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. So that's because all of a sudden you understand something. Now you feel like you have a new revelation. There is no new revelation. That's temptation. Telling you that you think you got this thing figured out when really you don't. If it was not for illumination to be able to understand the revelation, we will continually fall into temptation. So when you struggle with stuff day by day, ask yourself, is this temptation? It's like that child with that cookie that's on the table, right? Because that's how we are. There's a cookie on the table, your mama say don't touch it. That automatically throws temptation in the mix. Because what happens is you can see the temptation 
Adam and Eve could see the temptation. Jesus could see the temptation. But how do you respond with the temptation when the answer is don't go near it? Adam and Eve went near it. We've been in trouble ever since. Jesus didn't. We've been set free from Adam and Eve. So the cookie is there and it's calling you. It's on the table. There's a light just flashing on it, blinking. You know, got one of them neon light arrows pointing right here. Touch, touch. But you keep hearing in the back of your mind, don't touch. If you touch that, you're going to get a whooping. If you, if you touch that, it's not going to be good for you. But you keep seeing it because so you walk past it. And you're looking at all the things you want, but you know you can't touch. And then a lot of times what happens is you kind of play around. You know, or you, you done stumbled on something. And there's a crumb to the side, and you kind of just. I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I just. I just tasted it. The problem with the taste is it. It. It, it satisfies. And so then you dig deeper into your temptation. So whether you're dealing with physical sin, sexual sin, mental sin, all these things, if you keep dealing with it, eventually you're gonna do what? You're gonna grab that cookie. You don't care what your mama said. You don't care. Because right now, it's your own self-gratification. So you are employing the temptation theology, but you have not looked at Revelation. Revelation says that if you touch that, it's already been revealed, right? She told you before you even got there, if you touch that, I'm going to whoop you. That's the revelation. This is not a mystery. No, It's, it's been revealed, right? It has been revealed that if you touch that, if you fool with this, if you fool with that, you will not make it. But revelation is an illumination. You can know something, but don't understand the implications of it because you haven't understood the ramifications of it. So, temptation is the cookie. Revelation says, I don't, I should not touch, because when I touch, I'm going to be destroyed. I must employ or imply illumination to say, aha. I understand what has been revealed, that there is my point of interest. The revelation has been spoken. But illumination adds light to the revelation. So now I realize if I touch that, I'm not going to make it. So what I have to do is allow illumination to take over. So that temptation doesn't take me over. And I don't have to experience the revelation. Illumination is the lighting or light. It has to add light. You can come to church every Sunday, hear a powerful word every Sunday, and it means something to you at that particular moment. But if you don't shine light on it, then the revelation means absolutely nothing. See, you know where you need to. The Bible says, fell out to assemble. That's the revelation. It's been revealed. You need to be in God's service. You need to be with the fellowship of the saints. These things have been revealed because if you would fall away, then you are going to be open to temptation. So you know what the revelation is, but you refuse to shine a light on it and follow it. You think you're going to church with something new. No, it's not new. It's been here since the word. Since the beginning. But you are dealing with three things and you keep looking at just one. We got to stop. We can't let temptation run our lives or ruin our lives. Ain't nothing good about temptation. But revelation, you got to read this word to understand that it's already there. But then you need the Holy Spirit to shine light to understand all of the consequences of the revelation. Jesus Christ is coming back. It's already been revealed. Yes, yes. 
It's not going nowhere. The light says if you want to be with him, you have to accept what he did, his work on the cross. The mystery is no longer a mystery. It's been revealed. Back then, it was a revelation. <laughs> it had not come to fruition yet. Right? The Bible said, you, you can even ask Jesus, when Jesus was talking, he said, I'm doing this so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. In other words, I'm doing this to shine a light on the revelation that was already prophesied. He ain't say nothing about temptation. Because temptation is going to take you away from what? The cross. You want to be successful in this life? Stop letting your temptation lead you. Settle it down. And call on the name of the Lord. Understand, when you read God's word, you know if it's not in his will, at least we're supposed to. We can't do no Scooby-Doo, homie. Okay, Raggy. No. We don't have an excuse to look like the world when we are supposed to be what? Believers. Temptation has no, what, it's not going anywhere because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Bible declares it. So the revelation is you are a weak piece of flesh. The illumination is but the spirit. So I got to tap into the spirit so I don't allow my flesh to dictate what I do. You think I was out in the world because I just wanted to be out there? No, I was following temptation. The world said, hey, be with as many women as you can be. Make as much money as you can make. Smoke, drink, do whatever you want to do. Look like everybody else. Be like everybody else. Forget about this God. You walk into it and you find out why your world is so upside down. Why do people who are millionaires, rich folk, rich people commit suicide? It makes no sense, right? You got everything I want. Are you going to kill yourself or can I get some of that? Then you find you didn't kill yourself. We keep chasing temptation when we should be understanding revelation and chasing illumination. Right. Told y'all I'd be a little theological with y'all. Galatians 1, 11 through 12 says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. Revelation. For I do not receive it or learn it from any human source. Revelation. Here comes illumination. Instead, I received it by a revelation of Jesus Christ. There is the reason why I have what I have. The reason why you should exist the way you exist is because of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, why I look like we filed in the devil over Jesus? Who has the authority or power over your life? Look at John 1.4. In him was life. Revelation. And the life was the light of men. Illumination. John 3.19. And this is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Don't let temptation be the reason or the the reason for your demise. You have the revelation. 66 books of what God has already revealed to us. But we got to spend time in it. And there's no excuse not to spend time in it. You can say, well, I don't read, then put it on audio. If you put it on audio and follow along, you'll learn how to read. Illumination. <laughs> Temptation wants you to be lazy. Temptation wants you to act like you don't know so you can keep doing what you're doing. But once you've been told and you become accountable, you become responsible. So once again, we're dealing with revelation and illumination, not temptation. 
You want your children to do the right things? Learn the revelation and then show them the illumination. In other words, how to apply what I've just heard. How to make it stick. How to make it work. Because Christ didn't die for us to be failures. Because in that case, why die? He came to shine light on what's already been revealed. Don't let temptation take you out. There's enough in this world. Think about it. When you walk out that door, you'll have ten temptations before you have one illumination. Because you accept the temptations faster than the illumination because you don't understand the revelation. Jesus Christ understood the temptation that happened in the garden. Why? Because he came down to fix it. Man, we had everything we wanted, but that wasn't enough. Everything. But there was a one tree that God said, don't touch. The day you touch, you will surely die. That's the revelation. Illumination, they didn't get until after they took from the fruit. But the temptation, because of the temptation, everybody that was a part of temptation all suffered. The serpent suffered. Woman suffered. And man suffered. Aren't you tired of suffering? (laughs) Jesus came and died for us so that we wouldn't have to suffer no more. Aren't you tired of making the same mistakes over and over again? Aren't you tired of letting the devil beat you up from here to there? Let your flesh take you from here to there? When yet there is a revelation over your life? You just need to tap into the illumination to see the revelation so that you realize that it has already been spoken into you? And when you find out what the revelation was, it's that moment to shine? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let's start walking in illumination versus temptation. Revelation is the connector. Temptation. Illumination. In the middle of it is the revelation. Stop leaning toward the left and move to the right. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died for your sins and mine. So that we wouldn't be tempted in the wilderness without a victory. We don't have to lose. Your marriages can stay strong. Your health can be strong. Your mind can be strong. Your family can be strong. Your relationships can be strong. Your places of work can be strong. Your churches can be strong. Your community can be strong. Your counties can be strong. Your states and your countries can all be strong if you rely on the light versus the darkness. We can't escape. And so since you know you can't escape, you better cut a flashlight on it. And it starts with our lives. See, we quick to want to illuminate somebody else's mess. Uh-huh. I see you over there. Because the light is pointing that way, which means there's darkness pointing your way. No. Put that light over your head. You put it over your head, then you'll be able to see your stuff. And when you begin to do what God has called you to do, others will follow. Remember... Eve took a bite, and Adam just co-signed it. He could have said, no, nah, baby, I know you messed up, but I ain't going to mess up because I'm going to cover you like I'm supposed to cover you. He didn't let the light come through, though. Let the light come through. Let it shine. And I promise you, and I can, I, you know, I mean, I can make these promises because I, I know what God's word says. You just got to do it. You gotta follow. If you, if this is nothing. This I'm not giving you something that's me. 
I'm giving you theology. I'm giving you God's word. I'm telling you to put it to your circumstances and your situations and watch they change. So I don't, I'm not moving anywhere because God ain't spoke to that yet. But he has put it in my mind. He also has showed us now what we're able to do, which we thought we probably couldn't do. And so now we're in a better position to make an informed decision than what we were before. So he has just brought illumination to the revelation that I am a child of God and I can do marvelous things well beyond what anybody else could ever imagine as long as I continue to walk in him. You are more than what you've become. We are more than what we've become. We just got to shine a light on it. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Door the church open this morning. You may have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And you may have accepted him. But you still keep letting temptation dictate your life. This world was not designed to help us. It's designed to destroy us. Satan runs rampant tempting folks. He has no power other than what we give him. That's why the temptation is so detrimental to our walk. If we keep falling into it, then he keeps winning and we keep getting mad at God because we ain't where we supposed to be. Yet the problem is God ain't got nothing else new to tell us. He's told us everything we need to know. He's told us how to be successful. He told us how to walk away from temptation. He told us what the revelation is. And he has given us the light. If you are born again, believe it, the Holy Spirit is supposed to reside with you. If you allow the Holy Spirit to begin to be active in your life, it will shine a light on everything. That's why I gathered myself and said, let me pray about this situation first. And Lord, I'm going to wait until you speak. I did it on my own before, and, and I was flat out on the floor somewhere. Talking about, Lord, why didn't you stop me? I did. You wouldn't listen. You didn't consult me. And everything consult the Lord. That's what salvation means. It means you have a connection to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares, Jesus said, I'm at the right hand of the Father making intercession. He knows us. Allow that Holy Spirit in you to shine that light. And if you don't have it, then I suggest you come up. Give your life to Christ. If you are online and you feel it's time to get out of temptation, it's time to start learning about the revelation so that Christ or the Holy Spirit can give the illumination. If you want Jesus to be in your life, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Early on a Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Because he got up, you can get up. And the caveat to it all is that he's coming back for us. So if you want to accept Christ and you're at home, repeat after me, Father, forgive me a sinner. Come into my life and make me whole. I've allowed allow temptation to lead me. Now let me understand the revelation that I might receive the illumination that I might be what you called me to be and not what this world says I am. It is in Jesus name I pray. Amen. I believe you prayed that simple prayer. You believe with all your heart and your might that Jesus is Lord. He is coming back for you that you are born again. But this is just the beginning. Find a church home. Dig into God's word. And don't dig into it by yourself. Because that's a dangerous way to misunderstand the text completely. you got to be able to bounce it off of one another because iron sharpens iron. So do what you have to do. Let us know if you accepted Christ. But make sure you unite somewhere. Don't have to be here. Just make sure that they are a Bible preaching church. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And I'll tell you, here's the key. Here's the key to joining the church. It's not because the preacher can preach. Not because the choir can sing. It's not because they have all kind of programs that may meet your needs. 
The reason why God sends you to a church is because you have a gift for that church. Because God never saved anybody to sin. We have a work to do. And it's easier to stay on course when you're working. When you're not working, you become a busybody. And you and everybody else's business. So understand, when you go somewhere, you ought to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit saying, you have what that place needs. If you feel that, I suggest you join. I suggest you become a part of the family and begin to exercise your ministry gifts. Amen? Amen. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray the altar call prayer. Father God, we come right now to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us, Father. Lord, we realize that temptation is all around us. But Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word. We're thankful that there's nothing else new that will surprise us, Father. We're thankful that you have already son, done and said and did all that you're going to do. We just pray now for illumination to be able to see what you've already revealed, that we might be more of a blessing to the kingdom, Father. Father, walk through our marriages. Walk through our relationships. Walk through our places of employment. Walk through our schools, our churches. Walk through our communities, our neighborhoods, our cities, our countries, our states, our barrels, whatever it may be, wherever you are. Father, allow, allow your presence to reign supreme. Let us be the light of this world. Let us be the salt, the flavor that changes those things around us. Help us, Lord. Let us shine the light so that others can see and no longer have to trip in darkness because we have been tripping in darkness, Father. Let us be responsible, Father, for all you've taught us, all that we've learned, all that we've heard, all that we know to be right. Let us be responsible as citizens of the kingdom, Father. Then, Father, we just pray that you would bless those who are not here, bless those who are out there virtually, those who are watching we pray that whatever the situation may be, that you would touch, heal, anoint, fix, remove. Whatever needs to be done, Father, I don't have to tell you what to do because you are God and you already know. So we're praying that you would just fix the situation, Father. Fix their mental, fix their spiritual, fix their physical, Father. Allow them to understand that every day is a day to draw closer to you, Father. Bless our children as they continue to deal with school, Father, virtually or hybrid or whichever lesson or session they're, they're learning in, Father. Keep them safe. We realize that this virus is back on the rise yet again, Father. We pray for safety of all of our children, all of our young people, Father. We're not coming to you because you can't. We're coming to you because you can. So touch them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Keep them safe, Father, as only you can, Lord. Then, Lord, as we leave this place, continue to cover us, keep us, and bless us as only you can. But allow us to walk in the illumination versus temptation, Father. Enough is enough, Lord. We need to start spitting scripture back the same way you did when you was tested in the wilderness, Father. Because it is also written that man should not live by bread alone. Amen. So, Father, give us that type of boldness to speak to temptation. As we struggle with things that our flesh wants or what we want, give us the illumination to say, nah, not today. Touch us, Lord, and help us as we, only, as we help others as well to come together to be a relationship that's on fire for you, Father. Bless now, Lord, and keep us only you can until we meet again, Father. Keep us. Watch over us as only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans 12. See, I'm glad y'all said that. That means y'all like him in Romans 12. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove 
What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be in many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. Having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry, nor he that teacheth on teaching, nor he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing in instant in prayer, distributing the necessity of saints, giving the hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so dawn thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And the church said, Amen. Amen. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Amen. Once again, I want to thank the Lord for your presence. I pray that you understood what was being said. I pray that your lives will be enriched immeasurably by what you've heard. Because temptation is not our friend but it destroys us on a daily basis. And we allow it to when we should not. Don't let this world get so deep in your mind that you lose your faith walk. You understand what I'm saying? It is imperative that we understand the revelation. It is imperative that we shine a light on those dark places that we might walk the way God wants us to walk and watch the blessings flow. <laughs> it's the greatest thing about God, right? Even when you don't realize it, they still flow. Yes. See, in our temptation, he still covered us. Yes, but just imagine if we didn't walk in temptation, how much more we would see the covering the illumination that is in our lives and we would not make those same mistakes over and over again. Amen? Amen. Church motto, my, my purpose, purpose is bigger than my circumstances. Tell somebody next to you, your purpose is bigger than your circumstances. Raise your hands toward the heavens and say, our purpose is bigger than our circumstances. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you.